The Kawhi Less Clippers going down in history yesterday for all the wrong reasons. Dallas set an NBA record with a 50 point lead at the half over the Clippers. That is the largest in NBA history, period. Final score 124 to 73. Here's PG 13 after the game. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, we got our, our boats kicked today. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one game. Um, I think we'll just take what we need to take away from today um, and go to the next one. Um, we wasn't ready today. We wasn't prepared, um, not from the plan, but just from us being ready to go. Um, and that's on me. Um, and so, you know, we'll be ready for the next game. Kendrick Perkins here now joining Dominique for this debate. Now, PG said it was just one game, but it was a really, really bad game. Perk, what does this law say about the Clippers? Well, it says a lot. The Clippers are like that student that, that always used to bring an apple to school for the teacher and sit at the front of the class but could never pass the written test. And here's, here's why. Here's why I say this, all right? I understand you know, in the NBA that you're going to lose games, right? You're going to lose games. But to be down 50 at the half, okay, that's one thing. To score 25 points and be down 50, that's one thing. But to not fight back is another thing. I kept watching the second half saying, okay, here go the Clippers. They're going to make a run. They're going to at least cut this to 30. And they didn't make a run. So that goes to show me two things. One, Kawhi just might be the best player in the NBA because if they're going to lose by 50 with him being out, that goes to show me how valuable he really is to the Los Angeles Clippers. Two, that they don't have a leader. And I'm not talking about Ty Lue and the coaching staff. I'm talking about a leader, a vocal leader that's in the locker room, that's on the bench. Not a leader that's going to be talking all the tough guy talk, but it's going to be holding guys accountable and saying, hey, in this five minutes, we about to get stops and we go go on an 8-0 run. The next five minutes, we about to go on another 6-0 run. Let's cut into this league. Let's play possession by possession. They don't have that. And I feel like the Clippers dropped the ball in the offseason by not picking up Rajon Rondo. That was the guy that they needed. They needed a guy like him, a floor general. I love what Pat Bell brings to the table, but he's not that guy. And so what it goes to show me is that the Clippers are the true definition of front runners, not because they lost the game, but because when things get tough and they get down big, they hang their heads and it just almost seems like they give up and not make a push to at least get back in the game and make it a competitive game. And it's a damn shame. Yeah, I mean, to be down 50 points at half, normally the other team lets off the gas in all sports. If you're down by that much, the other team lets off the gas and you have some personal pride and you fight back and you end up losing by 20 or, or something and then you still get blown out, but everyone's just trying to get out, get healthy. For it to go this bad, I think it is a little bit more concerning, but I agree with what Paul George said. I just wish he hadn't said it. I think he's right. It's just one game. That's a reasonable um, way to take this, and there's plenty of explanations or excuses with um, Kawhi not playing. They had a short offseason. They have a new coaching staff. You're right about them bringing in certain people. I think Luke Kennard and Nicholas Batum may bring some value on the court, but you're right about the mentality off the court. That feels like that was the biggest concern for the Clippers last year in the bubble was it was something mental, some sort of mental block, because it wasn't all for a lack of talent that they weren't able to get past, um, I guess it was Denver in, in, the, um, in the bubble. It was because when they got down, they didn't bounce back. So I think that it's concerning to see that it's repeating itself, but there are normally 82 games in the season. There's 72 this year. This is just one. I don't think that, this, that we can indict the whole team off of one game. The only problem is it's also a continuation off of what we saw from them last year, where they, they struggled Absolutely. because they couldn't quite get their mindset right, and they couldn't quite turn the corner when they needed to. And I thought, I, I disagree with you, though, on the Pat Bev point, is I think Pat Beverly is that guy who normally won't allow you to do that. He is that guy who has that pride and that um, intensity that'll get guys locked in in this moment. But because we know Kawhi is not it, and we know Paul George is not it. Well, well, first of all, Dominic, let me tell you, let me tell you why I disagree to that point. Is because although Pat Bev is a rah-rah type guy, his play still don't shows up and back it up. 
not only if you're going to be a raw, raw type guy and a guy that try to hold people accountable, your play has to back it up. We all know Rondo is a guy that not only is he going to, you know, bring guys together and hold guys accountable, but he's also going to elevate his game. It's a reason that you call him playoff Rondo. And to your point is, it's about their mental toughness. What's going to happen in the playoffs again? What if you get down 20? Are you going to have these mental lap laps again where you can't fight back? This is a this is a problem. And like I said, it's, it's a long season. Teams are going to lose games. The Lakers are going to lose. The Nets lost last night. But it ain't what you do. It's how you do it. And it's the fashion that they lost. You was down 50. And then you end up losing by 51. So that means in the second half, you didn't come out with the right mindset to say, you know what? We about to go out swinging. We not going to go out like this. I would have accepted it more if they would have went down and been maybe lost by 30 or 25. But it just goes to show that if you get out early on the Los Angeles Clippers, that you got them right where you want it. And then on top of that, the beef, all the animosity that they had with the Dallas Mavericks throughout their series, you would think that they would come out and fight back, not just get punched in the mouth and say, you know what, it's over, I'm going to tap out. No, nah, you got to throw a couple jabs and a couple uppercuts and show you that, hey, I'm ready to swing and ready to battle, but that's where the leadership come in. And Ka Kawhi might well, my, be the I mean, best my... player in the league if he mean that much. My pushback would normally be in this situation that it's just a regular season game, but the problem is they tried to be a, a hit-the-switch team last year, and they could never hit that switch. So to me, it sounds like, and I, I don't have the basketball expertise to go out there and say this, but it sounds like what you're saying is they can't win a championship with a team as it's currently constructed because if they weren't mentally tough last year, they didn't bring in the guys to make them any mentally tougher, unless you think Ty Lu over the course of the season is gonna turn them into some sort of tough guys or mentally strong guys that they weren't at the beginning of the season. It sounds like without some sort of trade or without somebody turning into somebody they can't be, they aren't a real title contender if they, if they aren't any tougher mentally than they were last year. Hey. And I'm with that, and, and I agree, and I, I, I actually believe that. Uh, I know you probably was watching a lot of football yesterday because they had football games on, but I actually watched when, when I actually watched the game yesterday. And Ty Lue is a coach that he never shows emotions during the game. He show all his emotions at practice and in film session. And I seen him up and down that sideline trying to get that team going. He's doing his part, but you got to have that on the court. And like Paul George, what you mean we wasn't ready? Like, okay, the first half, y'all got punched in the mouth. Second half, you got to come back and be ready in some standpoint. Yeah. Not to get smoked by yeah. 50. I, would, I, I just wish he, nobody said. Yeah, I just wish he didn't say it because I think in that situation, and it's, a, it's true across all sports, that intensity matters. I just wish he would have said, like, he didn't say that it's just one game. I wish he would have said, we lost. We got our butts kicked. It's unacceptable. We're going to address that. Like, that's, it's a small thing, but it, to me, it shows a different level of accountability than saying, uh, mm -hmm. it happens. It's just one game. He's right about it, but I hate to hear that from the leaders on the team in that, in that type of situation. Yeah, absolutely. There's really no room for them to make excuses after what we saw at the end of this past season. But guys, according to Elias, that 50-point halftime lead by the Mavericks just set records. The prior mark for that halftime lead was when the Warriors had a 47-point lead at halftime over the Kings. And that was in November of 1991. All right, Perk, we only got you for one segment. We yeah. wish we had you for longer, but thank you so much for being here. Yeah, See you soon. All right, guys, still much right, more to come you. right here on First Take. It looked like the season.